Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bakley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bakley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now here's your host, Pastor Paul Bakley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and we've got a powerful broadcast for you today. You know, sometimes we forget, we get in such a big hurry that we don't want to wait on the Lord. You know, the Bible tells us those that minister should wait upon their ministry. Well, all of us should wait upon the Lord, and He will renew our strength. So sometimes we pray, but if God doesn't answer our prayer in 15 minutes, then we go and do our thing. God wants you to stand still and receive his word. And in this broadcast, you're going to get a lot of great information uh, that I believe is going to help encourage you in this time we live in. We've got to be ready because we're in the battle, but the battle is not ours. It belongs to the Lord. We'll be right back with more on the coming apocalypse. Come with me to the Holy Land. Paul Begley Prophecy Tours, February 7th through the 17th, 2023. It's not just a tour, it's a Holy Land experience. Be with me when we go to all the great sights and the great sounds of Israel. And praise and worship singers are coming from Nashville. This will be amazing. Come with me. Paul Begley Prophecy Tours, February 7th through 17th. All right, folks. All right. So in today's broadcast, this we're going to go to some preaching. Going to go back under the big tent in the Freedom Fellowship there in the villages here in Florida, and we're going to be preaching that message, Stand Still and Receive the Word. Now, something to know is God is the God of second chances. He's the God that keeps moving. And he won't, uh, you know, he always believes in giving everybody another opportunity to make a difference in your life. Don't get in too big a hurry, but don't drag too far behind. Get right in there where God needs you to be. He's the God of mercy and grace. And uh, I think in this broadcast, in this uh, sermon you're going to watch, I want you to receive, stand still and just receive the word of the Lord in your life. I'll be right back. Let's go there now to Freedom Fellowship. Well, let me just read in the Bible in Numbers chapter 6. Let's go there. The Bible says, And there was, were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man that they could not keep the Passover on that day. In other words, they were involved in a funeral. And because the, the law of Moses says that if you have touched the body of a dead body you are not uh, clean to keep the Passover so there were some men that were defiled by the dead body of a man they could not keep the Passover on that day so they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day and those men said unto him we are defiled by a dead body of a man wherefore we are kept back that we may not offer an offering of the Lord in his appointed season among the children of Israel and Moses said unto them stand still don't overreact. No more knee-jerk reactions. I want you just to stand still a minute. Let's wait on the Lord a minute. He said, and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Keep unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body or, by, or be in a journey afar off, Yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. The 14th day of the second month, at evening, they shall keep it and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. In other words, I'm going to give you a second Passover. God is the God of second chances. And today is the second Passover. Passover of the Lord, and it so happens to be a blood moon over America. I believe there is something very prophetic taking place. In China, 
this past weekend, last weekend, the sky turned blood red. It was about as red as this uh, uh, tablecloth, or this cloth over top of the altar here. Very red. It was red as blood in over Shanghai, China. Uh, and I called it the Armageddon sky of Shanghai. But the people in Shanghai have been held in captivity. They literally have been prisoners in their own homes. 50 million people have been locked down uh, indiscriminately, no matter what their situation was, even to the point that they put fences in front of their doors and, 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 and locked them in, whether they needed food or not. And so the situation is this in Shanghai. The sky turned blood red on the 8th of May. And according to their omens, they have an ill omen that says, if the sky ever turns blood red, then a major earthquake will hit in seven days which would be today or tomorrow because this blood moon will start this evening and carry on through the midnight hour. I could have preached on the midnight hour in the Bible, but so many times in the word of God, God sends his either his redemption well really it's his redemption comes at mid it was midnight when the lord passed over the land of egypt it was midnight when the bridegroom came for the for the for the virgins that were ready i'm telling you we don't know the day or the hour the lord's coming but i always make sure that at the midnight hour of your life you want to know that you know that your name is written in the lamb's book of life and you're a child of god been washed in the blood of jesus filled with the anointing of the holy ghost and are ready to go up the bible said we'll get a second chance well let's read on we need to stand still and receive the word the bible says in exodus 14 and moses said unto the people fear ye not remember when they were at the red sea pharaoh was coming behind them they had been through 400 years of slavery their backs scarred by the whip of the taskmaster. Their bellies hungry from lack of nutrition uh, in the hard labor. They had to work double time to make their own, gather their own straw to make their own bricks. But I'm glad that God heard the prayer and God had made a promise already uh, to the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that one day that his people would go to a promised land. Can you say amen? And the Bible tells us uh, that even Joseph, uh, whenever he was about to die in the land of Egypt, he said, when you guys leave this land of bondage, don't leave my bones in Egypt. And on that day, when God sent the Passover lamb, and they left, the, ch the children of Israel got up, and they left out of there, praise be unto God, somebody said, hey, wait a minute, whoa, wait a minute, go, go get the bone box, because there's some bones in the bone box. They're starting to rattle just a little bit can you say amen there's somebody a prophet of God Joseph of the Lord who said don't leave my bones here folks they carried his bones all the way to Israel through the desert through the Red Sea through the, 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 the waters of Jordan and I'm here to tell you God won't leave my bones in the dust he's coming back for the dead in Christ are going to rise first can you say amen <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Woo! Pray there's something going on in the in the graveyard. There's something going on in the valley of dry bones. There's something going on inside my bones right now. Matter of fact, Joshua, I mean it was Jeremiah that said, they told Jeremiah, we're tired of your prophesying. We're tired of you telling us what we gotta do and not do. We want you to be quiet. So they took him out to the dung, into the latrine, and they buried him in his neck in it. Then they thought about killing him. But one of them had enough sense to say, wait a minute, We're, the Bible, the, the word tells us, dare not touch the Lord's anointed, nor do his prophets no harm, so we better not kill him, but let's command him to stop his preaching, to stop his prophesying, and you know what they did, they commanded him, they pulled him out of there, he dusted himself off, he got himself back in shape, and he said, but wait a minute, how can you be quiet when there's fire shut up in your bones? The world may tell us as the church that we have to be quiet. We have to calm down. We need to settle down. Don't go to the school board meeting. We know how to take care of your kids better than you do. Close the church next time there's a pandemic. We know how to heal you. How's that working for us? I promise you, I know Melvin, I've already heard him say it. 
I don't care if hell itself raises its head. The doors of this tent and of that new sanctuary will never close, according to Pastor Melvin. Because if there's not healing in the house of the Lord, then where is there healing? For God said, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Let the weak say that I am strong. Let them that are sick say that I am healed. Praise be unto God. We've got a God who is mighty, powerful, and we run into his name. Can you say amen? amen. Exodus said, fear not. Moses said to the people, fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord as they stood at the Red Sea which he will show you today for the Egyptians whom you have seen today after we left you shall see them again no more forever can you say amen yeah. Egypt did try to attack Israel in 1967 in the six day war they must have forgot what Moses said Though they outnumbered the Israeli tanks 10 to 1, and they were coming through the Sinai at the same time the Syrians were coming over the Golan, at the same time that the Lebanese were coming from the north, and at the same time the Jordanians were coming from the south, and the Palestinians had rose up in the midst of Jerusalem. And even though Israel, still fairly, I mean, only 19 years old as a nation, they were outnumbered and gunned by man's standards. But as they went to fight the Egyptians al along the border of Israel, as they were coming through the Sinai toward them, God reversed the winds and blew a strong dust storm into the face of the Egyptians. And while they struggled and could not see, the Israeli tanks picked them off one by one and they outgunned and defeated them and drove them all the way back to Cairo. Can you say amen? That happened. How did it happen? Because God said forever. Can you say amen? You know, some people say, well, I know the Bible says this, but I, you know how we believe. Well, stop your believing and start believing what the word says. Put God first in all things in your life. David said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your path. Can you say amen? Oh, I'm feeling good in this. But there's the Holy Ghost is in this tent here today. Woo! I don't even think it's in the tent. I think it's bigger than the tent, don't you? I think it's all over. He's the God of more than enough. He's the God of the earth. He's <laughs> The earth is full of his glory. Can you say amen? 1 Samuel chapter 9, verse 27, the Bible said, And as, you see, King we Saul was about to be anointed king, he actually had received an anointing but Samuel knew his heart wasn't quite right anybody understand what I'm saying not everybody goes to church is their heart right but at least they come to church where they can get their heart right and so it says and as they were going down to the end of the city Samuel said to Saul bid the servant to pass on before us what had happened earlier was they had had a little banquet they had been up in the parlor and they had spent some time together and then Samuel said we need to go on a little journey so of course King Saul brought with him some servants and as they went on his journey Samuel said bid your servants to pass on before us and so they passed on but stand thou still a while King I need you to stand still a minute and the Bible says that that I may show thee the word of God and after that in verse in chapter 10 verse 5 after that thou come to the hill of God where is the garrison of the Philipp Philistines it shall come to pass that when thou art come hither to the city that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with the palstry and the tabret and a pipe and a harp this was the praise team he said you're going to go down there toward the place where the garrison of the Philistines are I'm sending you king into the enemy's camp and on your way you're going to run into some prophets that are prophesying 
and they just got done doing some praise and worship somewhere and it says and they shall prophesy and so as you meet them he says to him when the <laughs> and they shall prophesy and the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee and thou shalt prophesy with them and shall be turned into another man something's about to happen king you come in here one way but you're leaving here another way you come in here as a man but you're leaving as a prophet the king of Israel you've heard the word you've met the prophets and you're in the enemy's camp and the Bible said and let it be that when these signs are come unto thee that thou do an occasion serve thee for God is with thee and thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal. Now, Heidi told me this. I didn't know this. But Gilgal is a place, of course, where there's a great altar was set up. And you've heard of where they'd say, let's return to Gilgal or let's return to Bethel. Gilgal had a great altar set up. But it was set up in a way that there was around the altar are circles around the altar. That's why it's called Gilgal because the word Gilgal in Hebrew means around or circle. I want you to go down to Gilgal, which is already a circle. And when you get down there, it says, Behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee. Man, you're putting the king under a lot of requirements here. Go down to the enemy's camp. Wait till somebody prophesies to you. I'm going to turn your heart around. Then go down to Gilgal. Hang out by the altar for seven days. And I'll show up in seven days, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And it was so that when he turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. The moment you turn and repent toward God, you can't even get to this altar, and your heart will already change. I've told people, I've preached so many revivals, and Melvin, I know you've seen this. People would hang on under conviction. We call it old-time conviction, hanging on to the back of the pew, their knuckles turning white. They know they need to get saved, but they don't want to give up the world. Finally, they break loose. They take one step into the altar and in the, into the aisle. The minute they take one step, that's the only step they really need to take. God takes the rest of them, carries them to the front. They're already broken hearted. Their spirit is contrite. And the Holy Ghost of God begins to take them as they're just as they am, just as I am without one plea. And there they cry out to God and the Lord of glory pours down the precious blood from the Passover lamb, Jesus Christ himself from off the cross and redemption comes and their heart changes. They get a brand new heart and a brand new mind mine can you say amen all right all right i mean anytime you get come out of an environment like that you're fired up you can't help it when people come together in one mind and one accord and of course they're at freedom fellowship under the big tent in the villages in florida it seems to be that type of atmosphere now let's look at some of the things that we heard in that sermon i think to reiterate them again because samuel is telling the king you need, God's got more for you than just be an anointed king. You need to have a different change of heart. You need a different, you got to think differently. You got to stop the stinking thinking, okay? And you got to start walking under the laws of God. And so it's really neat whenever uh, Samuel says this to him. And I think if you go over there and look what he said, he said to him in verse 7, this is 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 7. He said, And let it be when these things are come unto thee that thou do as a occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal, and behold, I will come down unto thee to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days shalt thou tarry till I come to thee and show thee what to do. What? You just, he just told the king, you're going to go down to Gilgal and you're going to stay there for seven days and you wait till I get there. Then I'm going to tell you what God wants you to know. Well, why not tell him now? Because part of the getting the heart in condition 
is the waiting. You see, we always say patience is a virtue. The word virtue means uh, power. You know, when Jesus was, when they, the lady touched Jesus' hem of his garment, Jesus said, somebody's touched me because I felt the virtue or the pure power go out. We can't, sometimes we're in too big a hurry to wait on the Lord. The Lord wants us to call, to ask, and to wait to receive. It's a submission. It's full submission, full surrender. When that is letting someone be your Lord, and you know, if you train a dog, if you try to train a dog, they have to go through quite a bit of training on how, to, for obedience, of submission, wait, wait, wait. All of that is reconditioning the mind and the heart. That's what Saul needed. And so here the, Samuel's saying, I need you to go down there, but you're going to wait seven days. And then it says, uh, the next verse, uh, it says, and it was so that when he turned his back to go from Samuel and turn to go, God gave him another heart. <laughs> and all those signs came to pass that day. And what were those signs? Well, as you heard in the message there, runs into these guys prophesying. Uh, these were musicians. Four musicians wind up uh, prophesying to the king, and the king prophesies with them. Very interesting how that the Lord works in mysterious ways. You know, it's kind of funny. We're coming out with a brand new album, brand new album called Harmonize and Prophesy. And uh, we came up with this title after putting the project together. Israel Hall uh, produced it along with Joseph Shackelford. They produced this album for me. And um, we didn't have a title. We had 10 great songs. But what's the name of this project? We don't know. And my granddaughter, Lexi, she's one of the, uh, she sings a song on there. And she says, I know you should name it Harmonize and Prophesy. I thought, interesting, but it has a nice ring to it. All right, that's what we'll call it. But what I didn't know was in the Bible that when King Saul, Saul is sent to Gilgal, Samuel tells him that on your way, you're going to run into these four musicians, and these musicians are going to start prophesying to you. So in other words, they were harmonizing, and now they were prophesying. Didn't even know that was in the Bible. It's kind of amazing how the mouths of babes uh, comes forth the perfect praise. God knows what we need, but we've got to wait on the Lord. We've got to get our heart in the right place because God, you know, you take one step and God will do the rest. You know, if we just will, uh, if we'll just let him out. But what we, we need to uh, really have a brand new heart and a brand new mind. And if we, we need this, we need this because the Bible says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct your path. He's the God of mercy. He's the God of grace. And I'm glad that he told Joshua when he told him, to go on down there to the river Jordan. It's about time to go in. He told him, I want you to get down there and I want you to prepare the Ark of the Covenant, the seven priests, carry that ark. But when the priests step in that water in the Jordan River, tell them to stand still. Don't make another move. And why was that? Because God was about to perform a miracle. Slow down, everybody. Slow down. You're going a thousand miles an hour and going nowhere, aren't we? We're busy with this. We're busy with that. And at the end of the day, what have we done? We're existing. It's time to start living. And the only way you're going to start living is to stand still and receive the word from the Lord. I'll be right back in just a moment. A brand new DVD, Rapture Ready. Finally, we're going to answer the question. Millions of people want to know, what is the rapture? When is the rapture? And am I ready for the rapture? Well, this brand new DVD is filled with information, scripture, a PowerPoint presentation that will help you prepare to be rapture ready. We're living in those days. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Get this DVD now at my website. So you think about these things that God is doing, how he has a rhythm to how he speaks to us. 
Remember when he said to, to, I believe it was Adam, he says, as God was walking through the garden during the cool of the day, he said, where are you, Adam? And Adam was hiding. Um, God has this rhythm, just like the universe has a rhythm, and like we have rhythm. We need to stay in the rhythm with God. Now, notice this. God had told Moses, and we can talk about that next week, how that he should stand still and see the salvation of, of the Lord. But then Joshua, he gives him the same command. Here's what it says. In Joshua chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When ye are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, ye shall stand still in Jordan. God works in mysterious ways, but he's consistent. And he always comes through when we need him. You might be watching right now and you're not saved. And you say, wow, Pastor Paul, it seems like I'm beating my head against the wall. I've tried this. I've tried that. I've tried everything. Well, why don't you try God's way? Well, what is God's way, Pastor? Well, slow down. Slow down. There's this, the, Heidi's been studying what's called the law of ask. The Lord told her, says, you need to understand the law of ask. Ask and you shall receive. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, that's what we're doing. We're asking for your wisdom. We're asking for your mercy. We're asking for your grace. We're asking for your direction, Lord. I am repenting of any sins in my life. And I know, Lord, that I need to follow you and not my own understanding. So help me. Help me to learn patience. Help me to learn how to trust you. Because waiting, Lord, means trusting you. And I need your help. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this broadcast. I know I enjoy being with you every week. Please go to my website, paulbegleyprophecy.com. I want you to get ready to go to Israel with me. We'll talk about that more. But please get yourself ready. Go to paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. Come with me to the Holy Land. Paul Begley Prophecy Tours, February 7th through the 17th, 2023. It's not just a tour, it's a Holy Land experience. Be with me when we go to all the great sights and the great sounds of Israel. And praise and worship singers are coming from Nashville. This will be amazing. Come with me. Paul Baby Prophecy Tours, February 7th through 17th.